Ravensdale Bible Academy. Today's course is Introduction to Marriage, and today's lesson is rib. Well, what does that mean? Well, in Genesis 2, uh, 21 through 22, we see this. So the Lord God caused man to fall into a, a deep sleep, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which was taken from the man and brought her to the man. We see here the, the biblical account for where woman came from. And, and, and so, you know, one of the jokes is this, you know, we had man, right? And Adam is created by God. God breathed Adam into existence. And so again, it shouldn't be a stretch for you to believe and understand that God can bring Eve into existence from Adam's rib when God breathed Adam into existence. And even more importantly, God spoke the world into existence. So that shouldn't be that big of a stretch. But you can imagine Adam, right? Adam's walking around, he's in the garden, he's all by himself, and there's animals, but you know, no people, you know, and, and Adam is called a man. And so it's like, well, where, where, where do we get, you know, woman from, you know? Well, we get it from, you know, all of a sudden Adam turns the car. Whoa, man. Whoa, man. Yeah. I know. It's a bad joke, right? Woman. Anyway, we see here in this account of Genesis that God actually pulls Eve out of Adam's rib. And ironically, even today, man has one less rib. Isn't that weird? Isn't that an interest, one of those interesting little kind of scientific factoids? I mean, what's the scientific explanation for that? Well, here it is in Genesis chapter 2. Well, rib has a, a, a special kind of meaning to me. Um, I mentioned before that the Bible describes that two become one, right? Two become one. And what we actually really see here is the one, the two come from the one. Um, when, when I first got married and, and I came across this, I used to call my wife and every now and then I still do. I call her rib, rib. She's my rib. We're my rib and, and my wife. We're, we're finally reunited, right? We're, we're reunited. What this reveals is just this deep personal connection between the husband and the wife. And and we're not just two separate people. God really does intend for us to be one, uh, not just united mentally and not just united by contract or by covenant or by a spirit of love. But, but you know what? We are really bonded together as, as, as one, to become one. In, in, in Matthew 22, Jesus uh, reveals the greatest commandment. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, what's the model for love then in this example? It's to love with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You're supposed to love your neighbor with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So your neighbor, really your wife is your closest neighbor. Love her with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And so using that principle, using that principle, that, that's what I want you to think about today. That when you, you know, and especially speaking to the, the would-be future husbands out there, that, that you're looking for your, your rib, right? And, 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 but but what's, the, what's the goal when you, when you reunite? The goal then is to love your neighbor as yourself. The goal then is to love your wife as yourself. The goal then is to love with all your heart, not just part. Give it everything you have, all your heart. You don't hold anything back. You don't have any secret torches. You don't have any future, you know, second options. No, you give everything. You give your all into this marriage. You give her all of your heart. You don't have sacred little, you know, 
idols that we would call them, right? Like, like, you know what, sports is more important than my wife or my, my, you know, my car is more important than my wife or my vacationing is more important than my wife or my, my me time or the boys or whatever it is. No, you give all of your heart, 100%. You give all of your soul, which it's like, wait a minute, I thought, I thought I gave all my heart. Go deeper, go even deeper that the soul, the eternal soul, that even once this body is, is gone, this flesh is gone, that your souls go on forever. We see this in Ephesians 5, that a husband is supposed to love his wife like Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He died for the church. Why? Because he went to sanctify the church, right? To, to present as a holy, blameless to God. You have a role and a responsibility spiritually with your rib you you have a a, a a a a forever eternal spiritual goal that lasts for all time so so love god love your your wife with all your soul with all your spirit and and how do we do this well you love with all your mind you love with all your mind as an athlete, we, we would say this. You're, you're not in the game. Where's your head? Where's your mind? What are you thinking of? You're, you're thinking of too many things. Focus, right? Focus. Love your rib with all your mind. With all your mind. And so wives are bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh. Uh, if, if you can love her, as much as you're devoted to loving yourself, well, then you'll have a blessed marriage.